Welcome to the Big Me Kickoff. I am your host, Kevin Noon. It is Monday, February 26, 2024. And got a couple topics to talk about today on the show, including the NFL Scouting Combine, the new hire at Ohio State on the football side of things, and, oh, by the way, the men's basketball team doing things. But first, I want to remind everybody that we're brought to you in part by our great friends over at No Naturals. Let me get that scroll going. If you want to learn more about our partners at No Naturals, you can read about it on the scroll or all the way down at the bottom in the show notes. Be sure to check them out, and I will tell you about them a little bit more here later in the show. And by later, I mean like in a minute or two. But I hope everybody had a good weekend. It is NFL Scouting Combine week, and that is one of my favorite weeks. I have covered the NFL Scouting Combine almost 15 years. Yeah, I, I think that would be about right. I would say I think it's been about 15 years, give or take. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if I went down and counted credentials and found out that it's been more than 15. Uh, I've this has been a fixture for me going out to Indianapolis. I've always said that my coverage of these players goes from the moment they emerge on the high school scene all the way up until the NFL draft. So we're pretty much almost to the end of the run with this generation of players with the Combine, Ohio State's Pro Day, and then the draft. And with the draft being up in Detroit this year, I have a really strong feeling that I will go and cover it with Marvin Harrison Jr., supposed to be a top five pick. Now, if Marvin bucks the trend and doesn't go and doesn't want to be part of the green room, will I reconsider? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. But more on that here in a second as I tell you about our great friends at No Naturals. Are you ready for an entirely different edible experience? Welcome to No Naturals, where we're shattering the stereotype of one-note, slow-acting gummies. Forget waiting over an hour to feel the effects. Our gummies are fast-acting in just 15 to 30 minutes. You're not just choosing a flavor, you're choosing your vibe. With five core experiences and six custom combos, you're in full control. Whether it's energy and focus without the crash, a peaceful slumber that lasts all night, or a game-changing burst of bliss and euphoria, These edibles are the real deal. And the best part? You don't need a doctor's recommendation. No natural gummies are dispensary quality and discreetly delivered right to your door. So whether you're craving a productivity boost, a good night's sleep, or some blissful euphoria, say hello to No Naturals. Try them today and use code HUDDLE10 for 10% off your order at shop.nonaturals.com. Know your edibles. Know your experience. No Naturals. As I've, as I've said before, big fan of the product. Uh, I use Sleep Ones, and they have helped me get to sleep. I've had a hard time sleeping for a while now, and these these help. So check them out, shop.nonaturals.com. All right, now that we've got the housekeeping out of the way, let's start by talking about the NFL Scouting Combine. Eight Ohio State players will take part in one way, shape, or form. One player that will take part but not be working out is going to be Marvin Harrison Jr., uh, the talented Ohio State wide receiver winner of the Blitnikoff Award going to the nation's top wide receiver. Not only not working out at the NFL Scouting Combine, probably not going to work out at Ohio State's Pro Day either. He's going to focus this time. He's still in Columbus at the Woody working with the Ohio State strength and conditioning staff. He's not training for the combine he's training for the national football league we've always talked about what is it when it comes to the 40 and the bench press and the vert and the three cone drill and you know all of these things the short shuttle you can measure things you can gather things in terms of how it extrapolates through how a player could perform I mean, obviously, the 40 shows burst and speed and when, you know, when you get up to speed and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the, the, uh, the, the, the vert is going to show explosiveness. The long jump is going to show this. I mean, you've got all these things, but if you've already got a tremendous amount of tape, are you really gaining a whole lot by taking months and training for drills that you have to do once or twice, I guess, if you add to into the pro day, or should you be focusing on the craft that got you there? And I'm a big fan of the NFL scouting combine. If you hadn't noticed again, 
covering 15 of them or something in that neighborhood. I don't want to see anything that would ever lessen the meaningfulness of the event. But I don't think that Marvin Harrison Jr. is making a bad decision here. And there are going to be some people who are going to say, well, he doesn't want to, you know, he, you know, doesn't want his top end speed to be exposed or doesn't want to show that he can't bench or whatever. I, I don't care how many times Marvin Harrison Jr. can put up 225. I really don't. If you're going to show me a defensive player that is in the trenches, contact all the time, I'm going to care a little bit more. But I don't really care what Marvin Harrison Jr.'s numbers are in that. I would have loved to have seen him run. I would have loved to have seen him go through the gauntlet. I would have loved to see a lot of these types of events. But he is a football player. He is not a combine warrior. He is not going on American gladiators. He's not going on something like that to where these are the events that we have to see to be able to figure out what he's all about. We've, we've seen it. We've seen it through his three years of tape. We've seen it with the additional work that he does, always working with the, with the Monarch machine, things of that nature. Now, could this turn some teams off, this decision? You know, I don't know. I can't speak for that. I guarantee you if he's sitting at four, Arizona is not going to be like, well, we would have taken you if you would have run the short shuttle, but you didn't. So now we don't know. I, so I, I, don't, I don't really see a negative here, but it doesn't mean every player could get away with this. There, I mean, and honestly, I don't think that I would even let a quarterback get away with this. Getting away is maybe not the term I want to use because it sounds like that I'm agreeing that there is an admission of, of skipping out or, or, or whatever. I, I want to see certain things out of certain positions, but my wide receiver run routes, catch balls, block when needed. And don't be dumb. I mean, you know, that's really what I need to see. And he's going to meet with teams. He's going to go through the interviews. I'm sure they're going to put him through all the psychological things and ask him dumb questions to see how he responds. And all of that is going to be there. It, Marvin Harrison jr. Grew up in the NFL with his dad, obviously. And none of this should come as a shock or a surprise. So once again, another place of where maybe Marvin Harrison Jr. has a bit of an advantage over your run-of-the-mill athlete because of his father's status being an NFL great. So we'll see how this works out. And we're supposed to talk to Marvin at the Combine. We will not be putting any of our videos up live uh, there are some restrictions, and even if we could, I just the bandwidth in there is just not going to work. So we will upload it shortly after the interview is done. We're going to be shooting a lot of videos, not only Ohio State videos, but of just top players. Just top players. You never know what's going to be said. You never know who's going to want to watch. But be sure to keep it locked in here, not only at uh, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle, but also over at our sister station, over at Saturday Glory, where we will put up a lot of our other videos. We will not bog down this feed with a lot of other school players, but we, we're going to be there, so we may as well shoot it, right? If we are five minutes late getting our story up, it's not going to change the world, and if we can get some videos and help promote the brand, the plural, that's not a bad thing. So be sure to keep it locked in here at least at least one of my shows, maybe the two remaining ones for this week will both be combine based. Uh, we'll see leaving for the combine on Tuesday. We'll not be talking to any players. If we get there in time, we may get to talk to some NFL personnel, but coverage will start in earnest on Wednesday and I will be there through Saturday afternoon, racing back to Columbus to try and show up for a going away party, a retirement party, for a great friend in the industry, Clay Hall, who is hanging it up over at WSYX and WTTE. Clay and I started at Channel 6 at about the same time. He had a lot of years of experience on me beforehand. I wish I was talking about retirement, but I'm not. Uh, but, you know, a great career for Clay, so I would definitely like to get out there and be able to pay my respects, not like he is 
leaving town or anything, but the opportunity to go out there and buy him a beer is a good thing. But I digress. Uh, Ohio State on the hiring front made some news, picking up a new, uh, I guess, director of player personnel. I mean, the roles are all so kind of muddy in what their names are. He will be working under Ohio State general manager and associate AD Mark Pantone. His name is Sam Petito, and he's worked at Alabama under Nick Saban for the last eight years. Big hire right here. Obviously, Alabama has been a monster in terms of recruiting. Certainly doesn't hurt when a lot of the kids are from south of the Mason-Dixon line. You have a an inside track on kids from Alabama and Mississippi and, and that area. But the relationships that San Petito has been able to make along the way are notable. And now he takes all of that experience, all of that goodwill, all of all of that to Columbus, Ohio, to work with Mark Pantone and his staff because Mark Pantone is really one of the OGs of the player personnel role. And Ohio State has had a bit of a revolving door of people that have worked under Mark Pantone who have then gone on to get their own programs or move into roles that have either been similar or up uh, to Cincinnati, to USC, places like that. So, you know, this is going to be a big hire People are going to be like, well, is it going to be at Ohio State for a year or two years? I, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't really look into a crystal ball and f- say anything there, but he worked under Nick Saban for eight years. And that shows me somebody that not was not necessarily looking to be a job hopper. Now, how does this, you know, how does this necessarily work out between Mark Pantone and Sam Petito, and you have like Aaron Dunstan there. I mean, you've got a lot of people in the department. Well, when when you're recruiting for Ohio State, much like Alabama, it takes a lot of efforts and efforts of a lot of people to be able to maintain the product, the quality, and everything there. So I don't have a feeling that Sam Petito is going to come into Ohio State and feel that he's been shoeboxed and compartmentalized into a small role as opposed to maybe what he was used to doing at Alabama. Again, he was not traded to Ohio state and is under club control. And this, I mean, he he's coming into Ohio state with his eyes wide open, knowing exactly what his role is. And I can, I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that Kalen DeBoer would have loved to have kept him. I can't imagine that this is a, well, you gots to go, but you know, I haven't followed up on what's happening on that side, but, uh, you know, Alabama's loss is Ohio State's gain. I think this is a big move. Uh, the parents of Devin Sanchez both went to social media shortly after the news kind of came out. I believe Dan Hope of 11. No, I'm sorry. It was Alex Lightman of Letterman Row had it first. Yeah, good friend Alex uh, of ours. Uh, so I want to make sure I get credit out there correctly. But shortly after that, uh, the parents of Devin Sanchez came out and made posts on social media, just really praising the hire, praising the man, just, you know, how, how great the relationships were with Sam. Even when Ohio state landed Devin Sanchez, Sam, you know, Sam was very congratulatory. I'm not going anywhere yet. I've, you know, going to continue to, to pursue. And well, now he's going to get to help Ohio State play defense there in keeping uh, the, the commitment of, of Devin Sanchez, among others, Naeem Offord, the whole class. I mean, as he's not an offensive or defensive guy, he is over recruiting. So uh, I think this is one of those moves that everybody's kind of reporting on. But do you really understand the magnitude of it? I, I don't know. I mean, I really would like to at some point sit down with Mark Pantone and get a little bit of a Venn diagram of how these duties are spread out, where the overlap is. I don't think I would ever get the keys to the castle to know all the information, but you know, there certainly is a splitting of the duties, and Sam Petito is uh, is a, a known quantity. And when you pair him up with Mark Pantoni, who is also a known quantity, it makes Ohio State that much more dangerous. So. Uh, you know, be excited about that. It certainly doesn't hurt too of where he was located before as Ohio State continues to recruit guys like Micah DeBose out of the state of Alabama, guys that you have to figure that Alabama was certainly all in on beforehand. 
plus two, just he already knows all of the names of the guys that Ohio State is recruiting at this point. And he may bring some fresh perspectives on guys that don't have offers yet who right might might be on the borderline. I mean, ultimately, that comes down to Ryan Day and the staff as to where the offers go. But, you know, they they rely heavily upon their recruiting staffers because it would be a 40 hour a day job to be able to do everything that is asked upon you. If you were to just carry the water yourself and not, not delegate. So big hire, big hire. We'll talk about this more. I'm sure in the coming weeks and maybe we'll even be able to convince Ohio state sports information that we need to talk to Sam Petito, but I'm not going to hold my breath yet. We'll end on basketball. This is not normally a basketball show, but we've done basketball episodes in the past and, I have a feeling if you've made it already to the 16 minute mark of this show, you are a you are a big time big me kickoff fan and are just here for all the information. In case you were in a cave on Sunday, Ohio State now two and one under interim coach Jake Diebler with a win at the Breslin Center against Michigan State, 60 to 57. And what a game it was. I mean, it wasn't a game earlier as Ohio State was down double digits. Didn't have Jamison battle. He had an ankle injury, was ruled out for the game. So you go into a building that you've not won at since 2012. I believe it was like 4,357 days since Ohio State won at the Breslin Center prior. And that's just me trying to pull it off of what I remember from watching the telecast. Ohio State gets down into a hole, just does not appear to be connecting and then slowly starts to to claw back in and claws back into five or six, and Michigan State runs out a little bit, and then Michigan State goes ice cold. And Ohio State did some things that we really hadn't seen a lot of. Ohio State went really big with with, um, Zed Key and with uh, Felix Akpara, and while we've seen some of that, they've had some big lineups in there, and they just really pestered Michigan State in a game that Michigan State desperately needed as Michigan State's trying to get into the top four of the Big Ten to get the double bye. Uh, And the Buckeyes just kept coming and coming and coming. And Ohio State ends up uh, tying it up and then taking the lead at the free throw line. Then you have Michigan State who comes back, gets a basket. Ohio State ties it up at the line again. We get down to the final 11 seconds, I believe it is. Ohio State and Michigan State are tied. Michigan State employs full court pressure. Ohio State takes it up on the sideline of of where the benches are. It gets to uh, Bruce Thornton, who finds uh, Dale Bonner. Sorry, had a little brain fart there. Finds Dale Bonner, who is draped all over. Michigan State played great defense on him. Falling away, hits the three with 0.2 seconds left. Team storms the court. They go, they review, 0.2 seconds left. I've seen a lot in my years. There was no situation of where Michigan State was going to be able to tie the game with less than 0.4 on there. You cannot you cannot catch and shoot. So it would have had to have been a tip-in from three-point land. But, of course... In in the middle of all of it, you're just trying to figure everything out. You're trying to sort it all out. So I don't think anybody was really thinking about it. Uh, you know, Michigan State thinks about it for a second. There's no timeouts left in the game. Throws it in. Nothing happens. Ohio State beats the Spartans. This goes along with the win over Purdue. So now you have Jake Diebler two and one. Does that mean that Jake Diebler is the favorite to land the job? No, probably not. What is it going to take for Jake Diebler? To get an interview, to be a major candidate, I don't know. Does Ohio State have to win out of the regular season and win a couple games in the tournament and, and make the field somehow? Can Ohio State play its way onto the bubble? Even with that, I think that still may be a little difficult to be able to get to that point. But never say never. I think Ross Bjork, who starts at the first of the month, is going to look at candidates from across the nation. I think in a lot of ways, it it doesn't hurt to give the interim an interview. I mean, he's at least putting together a tremendous resume. I mean, maybe, just play a hypothetical here, maybe it's a situation of where Ohio State goes out and gets a little bit more of an elder coach 
for a couple few years to write, write the ship a little bit. Again, I, I probably have been labeled a little bit of a Holtman apologist through the years, and I understand that. I'm not going to fight it. I don't think that the program was in utter disarray. I do have, you know, I did have some questions with some personnel decisions. I think that some of the portal pickups were, I mean, you just don't know. You don't know. I mean, but some of them didn't work out. Some of them worked out. Some of them haven't. Um, so I'd, I'll be interested to see what happens there. Ohio State's next game is against Nebraska in Columbus, I believe, on Thursday. I'll, I'll be in Indianapolis, so hopefully I'll find an establishment with uh, whatever channel it's on and uh, some cold beer to to watch the game there. But I'll be very interested to see what happens there. What are you know? What are your thoughts? Who do you want to see Ohio State men's basketball go after realistically? You know, we could sit there and name every coach and be like, well, Ohio State should land this guy or that guy. Why? Well, because it's Ohio State. I get it. I get it. But I, I think there are realistic names, and I think they're unrealistic names. I mean, who who do you think Ohio State should go after? I'll, I'll go back and read your comments in, you know, in the coming days to see what's there. Um, may read some on the air, maybe not. Just really depends on kind of what we get there. And we've hit the 20-minute mark. I feel like I've hit more than enough here for a Monday show. As we get things started, the next show, one way or the other, will be from Indianapolis, somewhere in Indianapolis, as I'm at the NFL Scouting Combine with Mark Gibbler here from Buckeye Huddle. Be sure to check us out at Buckeye Huddle uh, for the you know for price of a crummy delivery pizza. You can get all the best team coverage, uh, recruiting coverage, an awesome message board. Get you know full access to Tom, Tony, myself, Mark, our recruit, our, our X's and O's experts, Ross, Mickey, uh, Devin. All of, all of the guys and fans from all across, not only the country, but the world, who are members over at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Be sure to like the channel, hit the bell, don't miss a single episode here. And if you're listening to us on any of your favorite podcasting platforms, leave us a five-star review. That helps us get out to more Ohio State fans. It allows us to be able to put more resources into what it is that we do with the podcast that obviously so many of you love here at the Big Me Kickoff and at YouTube.com slash BuckeyeHuddle. But until we meet again, have a great day, and I'll talk to you all very soon.